In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to deal with equations that have variables in the denominator of a fraction. First of all, let's talk about fractions in general. Remember, the one thing we can never do in mathematics is divide by zero. Division by zero is undefined, and you can see that by typing any number into your calculator and dividing it by zero. It'll come back with some kind of an error. When we have a fraction, the denominator can never equal zero. It's okay for the numerator to be zero, but the denominator cannot. Examples of fractions that we might have to be careful with are things like 25 over x plus 2, 3 plus 2x over x minus 4, or 25 over x. The danger is that when we put numbers into this fraction for x, we have to be sure that it doesn't cause the thing to become undefined. Take a look at our first exercise. We have 5 over x minus 3. We could plug any number in for x that we want, but we have to be careful to make sure that the fraction never has a zero in the denominator. What would cause it to be zero in the denominator? Well, x minus 3 cannot equal zero. If we solve for x in the denominator, we see that x cannot equal 3. If x were 3, we'd have 5 over 3 minus 3. That's 5 over 0, and we can't divide by 0. So in this fraction, we could use any number for x, but we can never plug a 3 into it. In our second exercise, once again, there's danger in the denominator because we see there's a variable down there. There are certain numbers we cannot plug in for x because that will cause us to have 4 over 0. 2x plus 7 cannot equal 0, or we have a 0 in the denominator. We solve that little piece, 2x plus 7 equals 0, and we see that x equals negative 7 halves is the problem. This fraction is undefined when x equals negative 7 halves. In other words, if we took the fraction and plugged in negative 7 halves, we'd end up with 4 over 0, and we can never divide by 0. So the value for which this fraction is undefined is negative 7 halves. In exercise 3 and 4, these are for you to try. Please see if you can find the value that causes danger in the denominator. Please pause the video here and complete exercises 3 and 4. In exercise 3, we see there's danger in the denominator because 4x minus 3 cannot equal 0. We find the value that would cause that to equal 0, and we get x is 3 fourths. In other words, if we put the number 3 fourths in for x, we have a fraction with 0 in the denominator. In example 4, x cannot be 0. If x is 0, we have something over 0, and we cannot have the denominator equal to 0. Now let's talk about equation solving. In exercise 5, we have an equation because we have two things equal to one another. We need to begin by clearing our denominator. We'll begin by multiplying both sides by x minus 5. This causes the x minus 5's on the left hand side to cancel out, and now there are no variables left in the denominator. We now have 1 equals 3 times x minus 5. We know how to solve that equation using the properties of equality, and we get x equals 16 over 3. It's really important to check your answer when you get your value for the equation to make sure that it doesn't cause a 0 in the denominator. 16 thirds does not, and so the answer x equals 16 thirds is our solution to the equation. In exercise 6, we're going to do something very similar. Here, notice we have a variable in the denominator, x plus 1. Please pause the video here and complete exercise 6. We begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by x plus 1. This caused the x plus 1's to cancel out, and now I have no more variables left in the denominator, and I can solve this equation. I have x equals 4 times x plus 1, which means x equals negative 4 thirds. Again, remember to check your answer and plug it into the original equation. Be sure it doesn't cause danger in the denominator by causing it to be 0 in the bottom of the fraction. In this case, it does not. So the solution, x equals negative 4 thirds, is valid, and that's our solution to the equation. 
In exercise seven, we have seven over p minus six equals 17 over p minus 17. Please pause the video here and complete exercise seven. In this exercise, we began by multiplying both sides by p minus six. That caused the p minus six on the left hand side to cancel out and now we have to deal with the p minus 17 on the other side. If we multiply both sides of the equation by p minus 17, those cancel out on the right hand side and now I have no more denominators to worry about so I can solve the equation. I have p minus 17 times seven equals 17 times p minus six. I can use the distributive property to solve the equation and I get x equals negative 17 over 10. Remember to check that solution in the original equation, the equation that's printed on the page. Here, negative 17 over 10 does not cause any problems because it doesn't cause the denominator to be zero. So x equals negative 17 tenths is a valid solution. In exercise eight, we have 14 sevenths equals x plus 16 over x minus eight. Once again, we want to solve this equation and we begin by clearing out the denominators by multiplying both sides of the equation by some number or expression. Please pause the video here and complete exercise eight. We solve this equation and we get x equals 32. We check our answer because there was a variable in the denominator which can be dangerous. 32 does not cause the denominator to be zero and so it's a valid solution. And so when you solve equations with variables in the denominator, remember to always check your answer. Make sure it doesn't cause the fraction to become undefined. And this is everything you need to know about solving equations with variables in the denominator and working with those fractions.